Good morning and welcome to another Tech Academy. And in the session today, we are going to look at um, Adobe's next generation of their analytics offering, something that we calling that we are calling customer journey analytics, which allows organizations to quickly rap, quickly analyze cross-channel interactions and discover omni-channel insights in real time with any data available to them, whether it's online or offline which is in Adobe Experience Platform. My name is Raj Sharma, and I'm the, I'm, I'm the part of the sales team in, in our uh, data and insights uh, uh, practice. Um, so I look after uh, a number of our data insights solutions, uh, namely being analytics, audience manager, and our personalization target, target tool. And joined with me today, is, is Walter, our senior technical uh, evangelist, who will be uh, running through an overview of CGA and uh, uh, showing you uh, two use cases in, in, in the form of a, of, of a demo. One use case being um, a call center deflection, um, which is coming up in a lot of conversations that I'm having with customers uh, uh, today, and, and another one around uh, ingesting uh, Google Analytics data and combining that with um, your CRM, your transactional uh, data. And also, um, we have a, a guest speaker today from our customer SuperRTL based in uh, Germany. Frederick Warner has very kindly offered to join us, and Walter and I will be in conversation with him um, to discuss, you know, his experience and, and, and insights of, of, of using customer journey analytics and why he believes it's a, it's a, a, a big changer, a big game changer for us. In terms of housekeeping, uh, this session is going to be uh, an hour long. Uh, so yes, it will finish at uh, 11 o'clock. The session will be recorded and um, we will make uh, the, the link available and, and, and send it to, to all attendees. Please feel free to make this session interactive, right? Uh, your, your thoughts, your comments are important to us. So please, you know, ask questions. There, there, there's two different types of chat. There's, a, there's an event chat where you can share comments and, and, and your thoughts. And if you have specific questions that you want to that you want to ask, uh, whether whether it's to uh, uh, to Frederick or to or to Walter, please use the, the question and answer um, uh, pod. And we have our ac experts on on hand to answer any questions throughout the session. Or if there's things that we we we, we can't answer, we will indeed follow up with you. And um, uh, finally, uh, we also have a, a survey that we will make available. And this is very important to you. So if you can please um, fill this in, this will help us a great deal because it will help us shape, shape up future sessions and, and the content, what's more relevant um, um, for, for you guys. Um, that leaves me to pass you on to Atta. Please enjoy and yeah, let's, let's um, uh, make it interactive. Thank you, over to you Atta. Yeah, thank you, Raj, and good morning to uh, all of you. Um, so today we'll, we'll be talking about customer journey analytics, um, but let's let's first talk a bit about the, the past. So where do we come from? Um, I think some of you on the call might have even seen this UI uh, several years ago, the Omniture Site Catalyst uh, UI, which uh, was uh, was a solution acquired by Adobe, and then it started to to, to um, uh, evolve a lot. Uh, of course, most of you will know Anal Analysis Workspace as a solution inside Adobe Analytics, uh, a graphical, easy, user-friendly tool that allows you to build out dashboards in a very uh, fluent way um, and basically allows you to think out loud and ask questions to the data and build out your dashboard as you move, move along. Um, over the years, we've added several uh, innovations to that, like things like uh, Attribution IQ, for instance, uh, which gives you more um, insights into uh, what attribution models are useful to you, how customers are interacting with campaigns, and what campaigns, what interactions, which channels are driving uh, traffic and, and eventually conversions. Uh, and today we are in the next iteration of that. Uh, so it's no longer just about web or just about mobile app data or, or even just about digital data, it's about every type of data. So uh, today we'll, we'll talk about that specific approach. Um, you'll be seeing this omnichannel dashboard live uh, in today's session, and it's really critical for you to understand that today's, in today's world, brands want to become experienced businesses. Um, 
but what, what does that what does that mean an experienced business is a business which basically um, designs and delivers exceptional experiences for customers and that's not just online that's also offline so customers today have experiences with you they interact with you and your brands uh, of course online uh, but also uh, offline in, in, in the store in the branch office uh, they call your con contact center and ask questions to that uh, path and basically all of those interactions well they are part of the customer experience so you as, as an analyst as, as a brand you need to have the ability to visualize each of those interactions into one specific environment and basically connect insight to action but that's specifically what customer journey analytics um, makes possible um, it allows you to make data insights accessible to everybody so you're, you're basically democratizing access to data in your organization in a way that does not require um, deep data skills so customer journey analytics and the, the whole analysis workspace user interface was designed to meet any type of persona um, so marketers, business users will be able to also find the answers to their questions in that UI, as will more advanced uh, data scientists, data analysts uh, as well. Um, it makes it possible to see the customer in a journey context. So you, 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 you have this sequence of events. Um, all of those events are called experience events and they're all timestamped. So you'll be able to put context, put uh, the, the journey in sequence and then learn from that. And well, I've already uh, um, pointed to it, so you'll be able to uh, take the power of, of data insights and also data science as part of uh, experience platform um, to do more and, and do better with the data that you have. Um, so what is customer journey analytics? Well, it's an application service which uh, allows you to rapidly analyze cross-channel interactions using any type of data available to you in Adobe experience platform. And I think that the concept of platform is critical in this context. Um, gone are the days whereby you have 75 point solutions which each, each have a database and each have a, their own way of describing data but today you need to have all of that data into one single location from where you can connect and standardize uh, access to that data throughout online and offline sources you need to be able to tie each interaction event to, to, to the in, all the way to, to the individual talk about one-to-one -one, always on marketing well, that means tying every interaction to an individual, to a real-time customer profile, and then you need to be able to visualize that sequentially across multiple channels. So customer journey analytics enables you uh, and, and every, every employee in your company to make that possible. Um, if we look at the value of what, what customers um, have already told us, so um, what we've seen in the, in the couple of projects that we've implemented globally is that there's a huge and a very quick time to value. Um, so between implementing Adobe Experience Platform and being able to use customer journey analytics, that's extremely fast, simply because you only do things once. You don't have to re-implement and remodel and, and so on. You implement things once in a good way, and from there you, you have the benefits of application services running on top of that data lake of Adobe Experience Platform. Um, well, it gives you those deep omnichannel insights that you need um, but it's not just about getting the insights, it's also, it's also about the action. So what you'll see um, with customer journey analytics and the whole Adobe Experience Platform approach is that it's, it's, it's seamless to connect the insight to the action, to connect uh, a uh, filter inside analysis workspace all the way to an action being taken to a customer towards display search, social, email, push, SMS, and, and all of the other channels connected to Adobe Experience Platform. It's easy for non-analysts, and that's, that's critical to understand. Um, it's not just for advanced data, data analysts. Any kind of user will be able to um, use curated workflows inside Customer Journey Analytics, and they'll appreciate the drag-and-drop UI of uh, Customer Journey Analytics. Then, of course, the, the segmentation approach. Uh, some of that is, is currently in roadmap and will soon be released, but the ability to build pre precise segments of even one customer uh, to then target that customer throughout the whole uh, activation ecosystem around Adobe Experience Platform is what it's all about. Um, let me make a quick comparison. Uh, I think that it's, it's useful to see for people who are using Adobe Analytics already today. 
Uh, so on the left side, you've got the, the basically the, the, the architecture around Adobe Analytics, whereby it starts with this data collection and processing pipeline and a web-focused schema that collects data. And then all the components that you've been using in, so already, like analysis workspace, scheduled reports, report builder, uh, APIs, uh, and data feeds, and so on. That architecture has now been translated into a platform architecture on the right side, where, where you can see that those two red building blocks, which are basically the, the, the SQL sauce behind all of this. Uh, of course, Adobe Experience Platform is the, the, the central piece going forwards, whereby all data will be collected inside Adobe Experience Platform, and it will be modeled against XDM uh, inside Platform. So XDM is the language to describe experience data, um, and that's something that happens once. So again, um, you won't have uh, 10 solutions anymore, which each have their own way of de describing the data going forward. You should, have, you should have one language to describe that data and describe those interactions just once. And from there, you should be able to reuse that across a multitude of solutions. Um, in today's demonstration, I'll be showing you the analysis workspace UI uh, on top of uh, Adobe Experience Platform. And we'll also talk a bit about segment sharing and, and a couple of other topics. And some of these components are still uh, not released in general availability, um, but what you'll see today is already there and is currently being used by customers uh, like uh, Frederik Werner from uh, SuperRTL. Um, so before we go into the demo, I just wanted to highlight a couple of use cases which we've seen customers implement already. Uh, goal deflection is the, the, the number one use case uh, I've seen so far uh, across telco, financial services, uh, retail. Uh, it's critical to understand how customers are reaching your contact center and also to understand what they have done before that. Of course, it's, it's quite expensive to, to, to have a, an employee speak to a customer. And if you can do anything to avoid uh, calls from reaching the call center by providing better information online, well, that's, that's a win-win situation. And before uh, customer journey analytics, it, this was a quite a lengthy implementation, which allowed, involved many different components, many different ETL uh, frameworks and, and so on. Whereas today, the, the brands who have implemented this have a, a, a couple of minutes of configuration and then they get to the insights immediately. Um, same thing for the click to brick use case in, in the retail industry. So uh, how do you attribute offline purchases to online activity? Um, so that, that's, again, a no-brainer. Cross-channel attribution, ad hoc SQL analysis. Uh, this is also quite uh, relevant uh, to understand. Today, you'll be seeing the user interface, which, is being, which can be used by any type of user. But we also have a query service, which makes it possible to send uh, simple SQL statements to Adobe Experience Platform and get your response back from query service. Uh, that will be part of a future uh, Tech Academy session, so we'll, we'll go a bit deeper on that later. Um, but at least you should know that this SQL uh, gateway exists already and uh, can also be used to consume data from Adobe Experience Platform without having to uh, export and import it into any other environment. So going forward, uh, augmented analysis use cases, um, they're putting in the, the machine learning components uh, to understand um, well how customers how segments compare to each other and how different uh, attribution models compare to each other but also things like uh, overcoming uh, limitations from the past um, so as you know Adobe Analytics has a limitation on the number of evars and props you can use there are other limitations in the data that's loading inside analysis workspace and now with customer journey analytics those challenges are, are gone. Uh, there's no limitation anymore on the, the number of variables that you can use. Uh, also, the concept of EVARs and props has changed now. This, is, this becomes a configurable thing uh, in, the, in the data view configuration, which you'll see in a couple of minutes. Um, so again, much more flexibility and much less limitations as compared to, to before. Um, changing historical data. So I think all of us have already made mistakes in the past. But what do you do when, when, when you made a mistake? How can you fix that? Uh, in Adobe Analytics, that typically wasn't uh, an easy thing to do, uh, which involved uh, Adobe engineering services. But with uh, customer journey analytics and Adobe Experience Platform, you can now uh, change that historical data and fix it once yourself. And then, uh, well, it won't haunt you anymore going forward. 
And overall, um, simplifying the data collection. Um, this is a, quite a big topic for Adobe at the moment. Uh, you might have heard about things like WebSDK, Alloy.js as a JavaScript, uh, which is there to replace App Measurement, Demdex.net, AT.js, Mbox.js, and, and so on. So basically, we are in a process whereby data collection is being simplified a lot currently. And with this new uh, way of collecting data in an XDM language inside Adobe Experience Platform with a common JavaScript library, we're basically making it possible to well, simplify that whole process, but also get more benefits uh, afterwards in, in the application because simply the language will be the same. So, so far for the introduction, let's, let's uh, get to the demo. Um, I'm going to start uh, a video for the demo. So let's uh, have a look. Every brand today wants to be an experienced business. But what does that mean? First, it means designing and delivering exceptional customer experiences in an omni-channel world. But that alone isn't enough. Brands also need to constantly measure and optimize those journeys. But how do you do that? If web data is in one application, CRM data in another application, call center data in another application, and transactional data in, well, another application. And how do you connect insight to action if the application for insight isn't the same application as the one used for action? Let's have a look at a typical financial services company like Secure Financial. Secure Financial is collecting a crazy amount of data on a daily basis. And unfortunately, collecting data doesn't automatically lead to getting insights. Secure Financial's marketers understand that a customer journey spans multiple channels like web, app, branch, ATM, call center, but they have no visibility in what happens when and in which order. They don't understand how customer interactions are connected to each other, which actually means that they can't take action in an effective way. If Secure Financial wants to connect insight to action, they need a single brain for data collection, customer profile, analysis, and activation. This single central brain should be built to meet the needs of marketing professionals and should make it possible to collect data just once and then use it for a multitude of activities. The central brain is called Adobe Experience Platform, which collects data across any channel just once, attaches it to a real-time customer profile, and from there makes it possible to analyze that same data without even having to move it. Customer Journey Analytics, as an application service of Adobe Experience Platform, reuses the data inside Adobe Experience Platform and makes it possible to build out interactive dashboards on top of that data. Let's have a look at how this is done. A customer is active on the Secure Financial website. This customer is currently identified by a first-party cookie, the Experience Cloud ID. Every click of that customer is collected in real time by the website and sent to Adobe Experience Platform in real time. This data collection happens using the new Web SDK, which in this case is implemented using Launch. But in reality, the Web SDK can be implemented using any tag management solution like Google Tag Manager or Telium IQ. The special thing about this data collection is that data is now mapped against an XDM standard. XDM, or Experience Data Model, is a standardized language to describe customer experiences. And as you can see by inspecting network requests in Chrome, a request is sent to a first-party tracking server, smetrics.aepdemo.net. The payload is basically a JSON structure, whereby you can clearly see how it's been modeled against XDM. This data is then collected in a dataset in Adobe Experience Platform, in this case, the AEP Demo Website Interactions dataset, from where it can be used for personalization through real-time CDP and journey orchestration, but also for insights through customer journey analytics. And when that customer additionally has an interaction with a call center agent, which is recorded in ServiceNow, that interaction is also stitched to the customer profile in Adobe Experience Platform by storing it in the AEP Demo Call Center Interactions dataset, from where it also becomes available for personalization and for analysis through customer journey analytics. All of that data, collected across multiple channels and devices, is now stored in one single brain which combines data collection, customer profile, analysis, and activation. Let's have a look at how we can analyze that data in Customer Journey Analytics. In the next couple of minutes, we'll discuss connections, 
data views and projects. Let's start by creating a new connection. A connection makes it possible to select datasets from Adobe Experience Platform for analysis. In this example, I'm selecting the datasets for website interactions, mobile app interactions and call center interactions. And while doing that, it's possible to preview the data in the dataset and you can actually see the customer interaction to ServiceNow appear in a preview. By adding those datasets to the connection, it's now possible to define the person ID, which will be used to stitch datasets together. After selecting identity fields, you can now see a merged view of that data. And the connection you set up also allows you to decide yourself whether or not you want to ingest all new data or if you just want to use historical data. And with the import all existing data checkbox, you can even backfill data from Adobe Experience Platform. The next step is to create your data view. The data view is needed to clean up and prepare the data for visualization, and it's similar to a virtual report suite in Adobe Analytics, where you define context-aware visit definitions, filtering, and naming of components. Data views make it possible to curate data to meet the needs of different teams in your organization. Basic definitions like time zone and session timeout can be set up on this page, and then it's time to start configuring which components you need to analyze the data and build visualizations in customer journey analytics. On the left side of the screen, you can find all available metrics and dimensions, which you can then add to the data view by dragging them to the middle section of the screen. As an example, let me select the dimension web.webpagedetails.name and drag it onto the canvas. I'm now able to change the name to make it easier to use this dimension while building a dashboard. What is really important is the concept of attribution settings. The concept of a hard-coded EVAR or PROP doesn't exist anymore in customer journey analytics, but the flexible attribution settings make a similar behavior possible. If you don't change these settings, the dimension will be considered a PROP, which means it will be focused at the hit level. And by changing the settings, the value of a dimension can be persisted across the full journey, just like an EVAR. The page name itself doesn't need any custom attribution settings, but when I select the field mobile number, it does make sense to change the attribution setting to last touch at the person reporting window. So even if the mobile number wasn't available in later hits, you'll still see the mobile phone number populated because of the attribution settings that were chosen. And of course, you can also add metrics onto the canvas, like in this example, the metric page views. Let's continue and have a look at a real analysis project like this omnichannel dashboard. This project has several panels, but let's start with the call center analysis. As an analyst, how cool is it to finally be able to combine data from web, app and call center into one and the same dashboard without any complex data manipulation or SQL commands? As an example of what's possible, let's have a look at this flow visualization. The question that we asked ourselves is, what leads to a customer calling the call center? And what is the outcome of a call center conversation? And also, what leads to a customer having a negative call center interaction? As an analyst, you don't need any advanced coding skills and you can simply drag and drop the dimensions from different datasets onto the same visualization and really discover what is happening and why it's happening. Next to the flow visualization, the fallout visualization also provides a clear step-by-step -step evolution of customers across the different stages of the journey and interactions. And additionally, any analyst can add comments in this free-form text field so that anybody looking at this dashboard across the organization can fully understand what they're looking at. The flow and fallout visualizations also make it possible to define a filter at any given point in the visualization itself, which can then be used afterwards as a filter. Call center analysis is one use case which leads to call deflection benefits. And another use case is omnichannel attribution. How can we define different datasets from interaction in an omnichannel world and get learnings out of those? As an analyst, you can now easily combine various attribution models against each other. You can look at the sessions per channel and eventually combine all that data in a clear flow that shows how customers evolve from one channel to the other. And finally, this freeform table provides you with clear insight, again, in which channels drive purchases and revenue, with the ability to easily break down dimensions into more depth to answer your questions on the fly. 
Here's a functional overview of what you just saw. Adobe Experience Platform is a foundation of customer journey analytics and XDM is the language used to describe the data upon ingestion. The upgraded interactive query engine, which has its foundations in Adobe Analytics, reads that XDM data from platform and makes it available for analysis through Analysis Workspace, but also for multiple other use cases. Finally, customer journey analytics is significantly faster than the alternatives by a wide margin. You can discover insights on call deflection and omnichannel attribution and take action in seconds and minutes instead of hours and days. Customer Journey Analytics is designed to let users explore data fluidly at runtime and answer questions open-endedly, extending the value of the underlying data from a multitude of channels of customer experience. Through its visually intuitive drag-and-drop UX, Analysis Workspace makes advanced analytics accessible to enterprise users with minimal programming or SQL skills, thus enabling them to ramp up on delivering value from insights fast. Perfect. So that, that, that was use case one, uh, call deflection analysis. Okay. Um, let's move forward with the, the next use case around Google Analytics data and ingesting that into Adobe Experience Platform. Um, so I think many of you are now asking the question in, in your head, why? Uh, well, uh, of course, once you've implemented Google Analytics, you're collecting uh, valuable customer data in, inside the Google, uh, Google stack. Um, but as a marketer, as a brand, you need to, to take action on that data across any channel, across display search, social, email, push, SMS, and then much, much more uh, without any limitation. And then that's where Adobe Experience Platform comes in. That data is crucial for experiences, for understand, understanding customer behavior. So you need to be able to take it and send it uh, through uh, to all of the ecosystems and not just into the Google ecosystem. Uh, secondly, there are no uh, limitations on volume or analysis inside customer journey analytics, which again is a big difference from other uh, environments in the market. Um, and things like fallout and flow analysis make it possible to uh, easily use multiple dimensions in that same uh, visualization without having to apply advanced SQL or export import flows or, and, and so on. So there are, there are a number of clear benefits for analysts to take Google Analytics data from inside Google Analytics and ingest it into uh, Adobe Experience Platform for both activation and advanced uh, insights. So uh, let me share my screen. Um, let's have a look at how this is implemented. So you're now seeing Google Cloud Platform uh, on the screen. Um, inside Google Cloud Platform, I'm in, in BigQuery. And uh, as some of you may know, uh, Google offers the ability to use public data sets um, like in this case, you've got a Google Analytics uh, sample data set, which we've uh, taken in this implementation. And we've basically uh, implemented it uh, and connected it to Adobe Experience Platform. So um, there's a couple of steps involved, but for, for the sake of uh, time, I'll just show, highlight you the, the, those concepts. Um, so that, that BigQuery public data is part of this um, the data set. We go Google Analytics sample. And this is basically the, the data that, that uh, Google is making available. It's from, for the time span 2016 to 2017. Uh, and of course, it's all uh, anonymized data that we are using in this exercise. And we've basically taken that data and we've uh, put it into a custom da data set inside um, BigQuery. Uh, and from there, uh, we've added a couple of fields which make it possible to define a customer ID to then uh, merge that customer ID with uh, the other data inside the Adobe Experience Platform, like CRM data, loyalty data, and, and so on. So with this setup in Google Cloud Platform done, uh, we also set up uh, API credentials and OAuth uh, authentication. And with those uh, elements, we have the ability to go into Adobe Experience Platform and define what we call a source connector. And as you can see, uh, the source connectors in Adobe Experience Platform are quite extensive already. And there are several types of, of uh, um, connectors for cloud storage, uh, CRM environments, uh, CRM customer success call center environments, but also databases. And as you can see here, the Google BigQuery uh, source connector is available for customers to use. Still in beta, but uh, it's, it's very functional already and, and you, can, you can use it. Um, and that means that uh, by clicking the Add Data button, you can basically define a new account, set up your uh, 
your, your uh, project details, like the, the client ID, client secret, and your uh, refresh token. And from there, you basically have defined your, your connectivity from platform into Google Cloud, Google Cloud Platform into BigQuery. If I take my existing connection and click uh, Next, you'll then see on, on the left side, it's loading the tables from inside BigQuery. Uh, that takes a couple of seconds, and there you go. You can find this uh, Tech Academy uh, data sets. And when I select it, you'll then see all of the fields uh, as, as part of a preview. Um, so this is basically showing you Google Analytics data from within BigQuery inside the Adobe Experience Platform user interface. So you can see timestamps, you can see page names, customer IDs, uh, Google Analytics uh, identifiers, and, and so on, and all of the other uh, dimensions that are available uh, to us. And then, of course, the next step is to taking is taking this uh, columnar uh, data set, which is uh, well in the Google language, to then map it against an Adobe Experience Platform uh, data model. So by selecting a data set out of my list, um, you'll then see that the XDM schema for that data set is being loaded. Pick the BigQuery web website interactions data set. And then uh, in a couple of seconds below here, you'll see the, the ability to, to start mapping fields. So it's basically taking on the left side all the source fields coming from Google, and then it's proposing target fields on the right side, whereby you, 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 well, you have to map that data against that XDM standard just once. It will then remember the mapping between those fields, and you will then have the ability uh, to schedule this uh, on a hourly, daily, weekly, monthly uh, cadence, just like you, you you would like to do it, um, and it will always take that same mapping to ingest data into Adobe Experience Platform. So with that done, we you basically have the integration done. And that data becomes available inside Adobe Experience Platform. It will be attached to the customer profile, and it will become available for activation uh, as well. Uh, but of course, we are here for an insights web webinar. So let's have a look at customer journey analytics. Um, once you're here, it starts with uh, defining your, uh, your connection. So let me do that uh, for you. Uh, in the connection configuration, you'll see all of the data sets being loaded on the left side. And there, I have the ability to select um, my BigQuery website interactions data sets and also my loyalty data, which we'll use to, to, to merge with each other. And by clicking the Add button, you now have the ability to define the person IDs. Like in the case for the, the loyalty schema, you can already see that the identifier is pre-selected to loyalty ID. And now for the BigQuery data sets, you'll see that we have things like CRM ID, uh, Google uh, Analytics ID available. So I'm gonna pick CRM ID. And with that, it, it is now able to merge that, as you can see in the person ID column. And from there, you've got a, you, you, know, you now have a consolidated view of that data coming from two different environments into uh, Adobe uh, Experience Platform and Customer Journey Analytics. So by clicking Next, you're then seeing the same UI from, from in the video a couple of minutes ago. You have the ability to decide if you want to automatically import new data, yes or no. So if you don't activate this, you'll simply load historical data once, and you'll have a static, st static data set available for an analysis. But if you then flick this switch on, at that moment, it will, it will stream data uh, into uh, customer journey analytics as well. So typically, the, the latency is a, is a couple of minutes. So uh, between data collection on the website and being, becoming available inside customer journey analytics. Uh, and of course, the backfill is an optional thing. Uh, so you, you can decide if you want to backfill existing data inside, uh, inside Adobe Experience Platform. If you are using Adobe Analytics already, and if you decide to, to move forward with Experience Platform and Customer Journey Analytics, to Analytics will make it possible to uh, do a backfill of Adobe Analytics data for one year. That means you'll get 12 months, 13 months of valuable uh, Adobe Analytics data automatically available inside Platform and inside Customer Journey Analytics for analysis. After creating the connection, you can then move forward by creating the data view um, which is uh, similar to what you've seen in the video, whereby you can basically define things like the time zone, the session timeout, like you can see here. Then, of course, you'll be able to uh, 
map your all of your fields over like Academy demo one based on Brussels, so in my time zone, and then I can manipulate the session timeout if I wish. I can make it smaller, I can make it larger, just uh, what I wish. Then in this add components section, that's where you take all of your dimensions and metrics and add them to the to the canvas. And as such, they will become available for uh, inside the project. So you, you'll be able to use this for visualization uh, afterwards. Yeah. As you've seen before, um, you have the ability to uh, manipulate the, those, those na the naming so that business users have it easier to understand what kind of data is collected in that uh, column. And you also have the ability, for instance, if I take the exit page, the ability to uh, change the custom attribution model uh, from same touch to, for instance, last touch. And from there, define the expiration window uh, in, I'm picking the person field, but of course, every use case will have a different uh, way of answering your needs. And by clicking save, I have now created a data view inside experience platform, which can now be used for visualization through a project. Um, we've already built out such a project uh, over here. So you can see um, in, in, inside this project, all, all we are using is uh, Google data. So everything is built using Google Analytics data. Um, of course, there's lots of configuration that, that goes behind this. Uh, I think you, you know this better than, than I do after having used Adobe Analytics in the past already. Um, but, uh, well, you can see the different types of visualization, uh, the different uh, channel visits. Uh, of course, you have the ability to break this down uh, by device, by a marketing channel, by campaign codes, and so much more. And, um, well, Everybody has a question. Everybody wants to understand more about their data. And with this uh, visualization, with this UI, you have the ability to ask those questions on the fly and basically update your dashboard uh, as you learn uh, as you learn how customers have behaved step by step. Um, one last thing I wanted to highlight is things like uh, cohort analysis, whereby you also have the ability to see how customers and their specific, in this case, loyalty level. Uh, influence how often they are using the application, how often they are using coming back to it and, and, and interacting with it. Um, so, yeah, I think as, a, as an analyst, Customer Journey Analytics offers you lots of uh, exciting new uh, visualizations, new capabilities in the sense that you can add all those data sets into the same uh, flow, into the same visualization, and from there connect insights to action uh, in real time. So this is uh, it for the, the demo video. Let me go back uh, to presentation. So I wanted to quickly give you a highlight, a, a summary of the benefits. So what you've seen in, in, in this presentation, of course, customer journey analytics make it possible to see the customer in their journey context. Um, you can now make insights available to everyone. So any type of user, any type of persona, in your organization will be able to, to learn something to, and to use this in, in an effective way. Um, with the connection with, with uh, Customer Journey Analytics and Adobe Experience Platform, you can start to use data science and machine learning uh, in a much more um, integrated way, I would say. Um, you can visualize and interact with data sets using ad hoc reporting. The ability to combine non-web data with the digital data is, is of course, uh, a no-brainer. That's really the game changer here. Uh, and, and finally, as an analyst, you have much more control over your data. You can change it. You can uh, change the data views. You can uh, fix uh, uh, errors from the past and, and so on. And really um, query, extract, transform, and load data throughout the whole Adobe Experience platform. That's it for me from a demo perspective. Let me hand over to uh, Raj or to start up the conversation with uh, Frederick. Wow, so that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Love, love, love the video and, and love that last demo with uh, regarding just in Google, Google Analytics. Um, thank you to the audience as well. Having some great questions coming, com coming through and I see our experts are answering them as, as, uh, as they go along. So yeah, keep them, keep them coming. And yeah, like I said, let's keep this, um, uh, keep the interaction going. So moving on to, to, to the next bit, we are now going to go into conversation with uh, our with Frederick Frederick Werner, who who's actually works for a, a customer 
called Super Super RTL, uh, based in Germany. So, hello, Frederick. Hello, Raj and Walter. Can you hear me? Loud yes. and clear. Loud and, loud and clear. Hello, first of all, everyone. Yeah, for, first of all, thank you very much for, for, for joining us this morning. Um, very much appreciated. So, yeah, it'd be great for, for you just to just just to you know, you know tell us a bit a bit a bit about yourself in terms of you know your 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 journey in terms of the, your journey work using the Adobe products, especially analytics. Um, and then um, yeah, that'd be, it'd be great if you could start off with that, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so let me start by saying a few words about uh, who SuperRTL actually is. Um, as you said, we are from Germany. We are a German broadcasting stations. We are running two TV stations actually um, focused on children from the ages of 3 to 13. Uh, so quite a diverse age range there. And what we're also doing is quite a lot of digital activities. We are running multiple websites, apps, but also um, more exotic things like smart TV applications or even TV in-stream applications um, that we all operate and uh, cater towards different uh, different age ranges with content like Super Wings or Paw Patrol or um, whatever it is that is required from us. Um, and I'm there leading the digital analytics team. I myself have been doing digital an analytics for almost 10 years now. Um, started with uh, quite a different uh, different tool set, been been across the whole stack of different vendors there for the last five years with Adobe. Um, and at SuperRTL we're using um, Adobe Analytics, of course, for web analytics purposes, um, and then also Adobe Target for a B testing and um, well personalization and recommendation engines in the future. Um, and now just started with uh, platform and customer journey analytics as well. Excellent, excellent. So, you know, let's talk about, you know, while we're here today, let's talk about customer journey analytics. And, you know, I've read the, uh, I've read your blog. Yeah. Very, very, very detailed and very, very, very good. Um, you know, you, 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 you talk about, uh, you know, customer journey analytics being a, a big game change, big game changer for, for Adobe. But, you know, why, why, why do you believe that in terms of, you know, you know, is there what, what's the reason behind that? I mean, I mean, you've obviously embarked on this journey using customer journey analytics, and you've had some use cases. So, you know, can you can you kind of talk us through those use cases, please? Yeah, um, sure. So, like I like I described, we have quite a diverse setup of different digital experiences, and uh, of course, it's great to have all of that data collected with Adobe Analytics, and that's, um, of course, our main analytics product towards the company. It's what we are training our users on to be really able to work for themselves in analysis workspace, share reports there, collaborate on there, and really allow them to well, get a report and then really dive deep on themselves, let them uh, just embrace self-service within that awesome platform um, because that's well like 90% of why I love Adobe Analytics so much at least in my heart I know there's uh, quite a bit uh, quite a bit around that but analysis workspace just as a as a environment for both the analysts and the business users is just what is unmatched in the whole industry for me um, so when we thought how could we actually bring all that data from Adobe Analytics where we collect for, um, different products, of course, in different reports, which as you do, how can we actually combine that and bring that all together? Um, and before platform and customer journey analytics, we were, of course, using at, uh, looking at the usual suspects there, for example, building our own um, data lake, like on-premise or in the cloud, uh, like with AWS, uh, GCP, and what have you. Um, and we were really evaluating building all that ourselves because there was just nothing out there that would work for us as a well, plug and play solution. Um, and then when customer journey analytics came along, well, first of all, I, I didn't understand it from the from the beginning and I uh, needed a private demo with Trevor Paulson from the product team to actually see what customer journey analytics is all about. Um, but once I understood that it's basically analysis workspace, but with any data that I can just think of. And if it's an Adobe Analytics data, then great. It's just a bit less effort. But like we've seen today, if it's call center data or Google Analytics data even, we can just bring all that in there. Um, so from our first use case, which was just combining digital analytics data from Adobe Analytics, 
we quickly discovered that we can just use that as any kind of customer focused and user centric big data platform, so to speak, we can, because we cannot just bring all the data that we could dream of right into platform and then with customer journey analytics, analyze it with the same user experience that analysis workspace offers for us today. So if our users just want to build a segment on the fly or create calculated metrics, everything that, that you can do in Adobe Analytics today, you can just do that in customer journey analytics as well. It looks the same, it feels the same, and it totally behaves the same from a user perspective. Um, so once I understood that, I was basically, well, sold for platform and CJA, of course, um, because I could just bring all the different use cases that we don't even have today, because right now we are only looking at Adobe Analytics data to, to be imported and just take this concept to actually be able to even tackle further use cases in the future where we would traditionally have to build our own data platform with ETL processes and all that stuff just right in the Adobe, um, in the Adobe Cosmos, which is just so, so much more efficient to us. Um, so basically those two use cases, um, to just give our business the opportunity to actually tackle those questions from a, um, for example, from, from a cross product perspective. Um, that's really what, uh, what stood out to us. And this is actually what we're building today. So, uh, of course, CJA is quite new. So we're starting with those use cases right now, um, where we actually bring together all the different platforms and websites, um, identify and stitch users across them and then actually look at how user journeys or marketing campaigns work from one product to the other. Like I said, we have, for example, um, different different age ranges and different products for those age ranges. And there's a natural transition and user journey across our products alone by uh, kids getting older and, uh -huh. and actually being able to look into those journeys, see that, uh, see that cross product journey stitched together is just awesome. That's great. That, that that's great, Frederick. And 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 you, and you talked about you touched upon you know you were thinking of doing something in house um, and 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 realised there's 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 cost involved in 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 building such 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 data lakes or, or data marts and, and ETR processes. So talk to me about the um you know talk to me about the, the the ease of implementation. You know how quick was it for you to deploy CGA and start getting that rapid insight, etc. Um. So yeah. yeah. That, that's you know, well. I'm I'm always sounding like a fanboy because it's actually just what I experienced. But uh, well, here we go again, um, because that was really really easy. Um, so we were looking at uh, when we were considering what platform we should go to and what product to buy. We were of course looking at the different um, well uh, out of the box product that are uh, that are available today, um, but just the amount of maintenance and setup and then also. And just so the day to day development of those platforms um, would just mean that we had to hire a lot of people, then pay for all those platforms and actually de well, develop them themselves and come up with all those fancy features ourselves. And that for a r rather small company with a small analytics team like ours was just not feasible. We couldn't do it. And that would be a well, quite substantial investment for us. Um, so just having worked with CJA and platform for a few weeks now, I can just say that, for example, our, uh, our first use case where we just wanted to have two websites, um, both side by side in one panel in analysis workspace and see how users move from one platform to the other. Um, for that first use cases, uh, the setup that I actually needed to do within platform and CJA was about five minutes. And that was really eye-opening to me because on both of those websites, of course, we have our ECID service. So we have those um, third-party cookies there that are able to uh, identify users cross domain. And just having to, well, make a few clicks inside of platform and then customer journey analytics to bring all that in, that was really eye-opening to me because well, we did our did our homework before that, of course. So we have a unified tracking concept, so we can rely that one either in Adobe Analytics means the same across all report suites. Um, and what I then realized was once I brought all that data into Customer Journey Analytics, so those two data sets from two different report suites, um, I didn't even have to name those variables within Customer Journey Analytics. That was all done for me. 
So I was immediately able to just see, well, there's my page name, there's my video name. I just had that. I didn't have to set that up. Um, of course, it would be a bit more, bit more work if it's not a Adobe data source, of course, because there's quite some intelligent stitching there. Um, but yeah, just, just having to connect CJA to those two data sets and then being able to see all that user journeys stitched together and see the all overlap between those platforms just out of the box that was eye opening to me. Right. And, and then, you know, uh, the other question I have is around query service. I mean, how, mm -hmm. how much of that have you, have you, have you currently used, uh, et cetera? Yeah. So for query service, there's basically two use cases that we're doing right now. Um, first is since uh, CJA is not yet using the identity service, we have to do some user stitching ourselves if we want to do some like sophisticated modeling, do statistical twins and all that stuff. Um, so that's like one use case to actually combine data sets um, into one big data set, do some user stitching across that data set and then pull that data into customer journey analytics. Um, and the other use case is, well, well I've, I've been working with Adobe Analytics for quite some time now. So I do have quite a few feature requests for Adobe Analytics um, that I'm always talking to Adobe about, of course. Um, and I just wanted to see if I could actually build that myself from data. And um, if any of you uh, guys watching follow me on Twitter, you know that I've actually uh, succeeded in that journey. Um, because just by using some of the, um, how, how you guys call it, Adobe defined functions within Career Service, I was actually able to do some very, very sophisticated like attribution modeling or do things like um, having a previous and next page name dimensions just available for use in analysis workspace or having like full passing reports. Um, that's just something I can build myself with query service and it's actually super simple um, because you guys of course foresaw that I wanted to do that and build some functions to just help us as a customer um, to really bring that data together and um, give that augmentation to our data, which is really, really simple to do. So things like sessionization, um, attribution, passing, that's all really, really simple. Um, and that was just something I was able to do. And now I have basically everything that I ever wanted to have from Adobe Analytics within Customer Journey Analytics, which again, is just awesome for me. That's great, that's great. So you know we've got we've got four minutes left to the to the end of the session. And one one question I have it's 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 you know we've we've had a great uh, uh, you know a, a number of attendees you know join the join this session for for a number of from from different sectors. What advice would you give them right in terms of customer journey analytics? You know what, what advice would you give um, existing Adobe Analytics customers, and mm. for those who are not. And Adobe Analytics customers, and where would you say CGA plays plays a part in? I know you explained where it plays a part when you're combining with Adobe Analytics data, but what about mm -hmm. for those who don't use Adobe Analytics? What 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 how what would, advice would you give them on 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 CGA? Yeah. And use so um, so the first advice that I would uh, give was don't be as stupid as me and actually get a demo from Adobe and talk to them about the, your use cases. Um, because that was really the the one thing that really set us uh, set us off in the beginning to just be able to talk to the product guys, talk to the um, experts at Adobe to actually look into those use cases and have those guys say, well, ha have you thought about doing this and this? Um, and I didn't, so uh, I'm doing this for quite some time and I even got some output out of those sessions. So just talk to those guys and let them really explain to you what platform and CJA can do in your specific use case. Because I was, because that's just the kind of guy I am, I was trying to figure all of that out myself um, with well, middling, uh, middling success there. Um, and just talk to Adobe about that. That's really my, my first and most important suggestion that I can give. Um, and the other thing is, um, especially for users who are not using Adobe Analytics today, um, I know you want to. Um, I know you want to give your users that experience, that ability to collaborate on data, share one user experience across both your business users and your analysts, and you can have that. 
And with platform and customer journey analytics, there's nothing that is keeping you from actually having that. You can just, like we saw today, bring your Google Analytics data in there. You don't need to change your implementation. Um, I can tell you from experience that there are quite some advantages if you would, but you don't have to do that. You can just take your data, take it from anywhere you like, from your ad servers, from your CRM system, whatever comes to your mind, and just put that into platform because um, that's also one thing that I just did on a on a well half an hour of a weekend was to, for example, do something that Adobe didn't have in mind. So bring all my Adobe Analytics um, usage log data, so the data that is generated by my actual Adobe Analytics users within Adobe Analytics into platform and CJA to just see what those guys are up to. Um, and that actually allowed me to switch off some old functionality within Adobe Analytics because I just knew that not very not very many people are using those actually and those people are already using the newer features. So I could just um, do some housekeeping within Analytics itself. Um, and that was really just a, a matter of half an hour of setup and dragging, uh, dragging a file from my desktop and dropping it into um, platform and customer journey analytics. Um, and that can be done with any data. So just talk to Adobe about your use cases, get a demo, um, maybe do some, some proof of concept there and just see what especially analysis workspace can do for your data. Because it's, uh, that's, that's really hard to well, transport in any kind of remote session, just what using analysis workspace feels like um, and you can have that and that is something that you should do uh, both for your analyst and your business users. That's fantastic. That's fantastic, Frederick. You know, thank you so much for, for, for your time today. Very, very insightful indeed. If you could um, um, post your, your, your blog on the, on the event chat so, so the audience can get a chance to read it for those who, for those who haven't, that, 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 that'd be awesome. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're on the top of the, top of the hour, so I'm just going back to the to the event chat and the the Q and A, and I'm seeing a lot a lot of questions. So thank you very much, guys. It's a very very good question, and I think my my, my team and my colleagues, uh, the experts, are answering them as they as they've uh, gone through the session. Um, Walter, is anything there that you see that hasn't been answered yet? No, I think we're all good. I think all questions have been answered. Uh, there were some questions around packaging and licensing, for which we'll get in touch uh, to the account managers, of course. Um, yeah. But everything is answered now, so I think we can conclude the session, Raj. Yeah, brilliant. Guys, just leaves me to say thank you very much for joining, and, and, and I hope you found it very useful. Um, uh, uh, we will share the recording uh, soon, soon after this session. And if you have any other questions and you want to take a bit of a deep dive and, and, and kind of work with us to kind of identify your use cases, whether it's call deflection or whether it's bringing in, you know, Google data or bringing in CRM, you know, call center data, transaction data, whatever, you know, we're, we're here to help. So, so, so please uh, get in touch and uh, it leaves me to say, take care, stay safe and speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you.